Okay. We are live. We're doing a special surprise class on United Souls by Eddie Goldsmith with Polveridu. Polveridu inspired learners, passionate educators. And uh, if you just give a few moments while we get the class ready, it's going to be a Zoom call. But we're giving the opportunity for you guys to listen in on YouTube just to make sure that, yes, everything's good. And uh, we thank our hosts for setting up the Zoom meeting and the opportunity. I recommend you guys checking it out. And it's a nice to collaborate with other organizations like Pulveridu, Pulveridu, and to... Pulveridu is great. Edu. Pulveridu. The it's R nice was there it. because we were redoing education, and now it's just about insight into everything. I, just, I don't know why I say redo, because I just feel like it's... Uh, Opportunity. Well, it looks like. It's not just that it looks like, but it's like we redo us. We're redoing all our concepts through the Zoom platform and through the community. Exactly. And everyone has an opportunity to reevaluate what they're saying and to work it through. So it's by there's no better way of understanding and internalization of what you're doing in life by other than going over it. You know, like by talking it out and expressing and a lot of people now are getting opportunities that didn't in the past through Zoom to communicate and that's amazing, you know? It is. And that, that is why it is Hello, Elliot. Oops, let's see if we can hear him. Hi, I'm muted. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be in, um, in, in um, hearing mode only. I'm driving. So, okay. Uh, Perfect. Me, okay? That's great. Right. Thank you for joining us. And Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov. Good Shavuot week Tov. to everyone. Good week. Exciting. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. And a good new year. You're, We're getting there. You're on your way. Oh, man. Always, Thank you. Always. It's a happy new year for everyone. I really, yeah. being a crazy 2020 vision, you know, like now we've got to get into the one part, the positive. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway. Now, you, you can turn on your video if you want. It's up to you. Yeah, I, I would turn it on in a bit. I'm just making a cup of coffee for myself. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So what we're coffee. gonna do is Perfect. we're gonna we're gonna get started because this is our yeah. crew for today. And yeah. Just double checking to make sure. Um, we have a couple who might still jump in. We sent out a couple of um, I sent out two more emails, so we'll see. But in any case, I want to welcome you to the class with Ellie. It's all about being united, and we're glad to have you here, Polgary, to you. Um, Ellie, do you want to do questions throughout, or you want to take a break and ask for questions? So thank you, uh, Lauren, for thing, and I'd like to start with the concept so that the questions can be in that theme, if you don't mind. Okay. Amazing. Perfect. Okay, so we're just going to make sure... Everything looks good. Thank you so much for setting this up. Pulver EDU, the Pulver family, amazing. Jeff and Lauren, who began this. And it's been a seven, eight month, nine month now even journey with the 2020 generation. We've been going through a corona challenge. And unfortunately, politically and emotionally, there's been a lot of divisiveness, especially online. And thank God we're starting to see a little bit of calming down of that maybe in an external sense, we hope. But um, on an internal level, definitely people need as much encouragement as possible. And that's what this platform hopefully would do. And hopefully also would be some educational aspects as well. I do have a whole course, which you know I'm not going to go through, and also basic introduction. But um, that will be hopefully part two, part three, et cetera. And you know, there's, this is a 10-part course that I have in my hands. And... I will allow people to mostly be interactive because I think that's the key to our generation to communicate more as possible, like in the long form of podcasting and everything has really taken off. And I feel that, you know, these kind of platforms give us opportunity to hear back from other people. What, what is unity for them? For me personally, un unity, united souls, is a very long journey that I've been having, thank God. I don't think just in this lifetime, I do have a very spiritual outlook, you know, but I didn't always grow up in that way. I didn't grow up 
spiritually uh, exposed so much. It was more a secular lifestyle in North London, very traditional. Uh, in terms of you know my Judaism and being a, a normal just human being in the world, and in the last say over 20 years, after coming back to Israel and the Holy Land, I had a lot of epiphanies and very powerful, profound experiences. And Jeff Palver, around 10 years into that, was part of that big journey because I went from being more private, as Stephen Covey says, a private victory. I went more into the private aspects, into the public space of being online, building concerts and events, booking artists. And I used the past that I grew up, which I hope has unified a lot of people through music events like Live Aid, that was my upbringing, and Live Earth, and then bringing it into Eretz Israel, into the Holy Land, into Israel, to, to music events and online experience. And that's really been the focus the last few years with especially now with the corona challenge speeding it up to united soul experience so that would be my intro how do i explain what united soul means just uh, before anyone asks any questions just really what i would say is that we all have an essential soul every single human being on this earth and this is an aspect of our being that can unify us all can give us opportunity to really connect and find profound fulfillment in our journey through this world in daily life, especially when communicating to people, because if you learn to speak on the soul level, it's a whole different level of communication. If you can do that in marriage, if you can do that with your family, with your loved ones, it's a different level of life. And I would like to help, you know, the, as many people, including myself and my family, to get to that level of communication. Am I always holding there? Like I'm being transparent? No. I'm not always holding, I'm not always in touch with my soul level, but it's something the more I believe you talk about, the more you, I'm writing about it now, thanks to our community here, and the more you sing about it, I have a collaboration album, and now we're working on a second and third, these kind of projects build the momentum that you start bringing into your daily life through business and actualization, the soul level, that it should become more revealed in your daily life. And it shouldn't just be a, a theoretical concept because I definitely have a lot of that wisdom stored up after the 10 years of studying and learning and teaching. But the last 10 years has been much more about now bringing it into real life and sharing it. And that's why I'm very happy to climax 2020 with this class um, because I believe it's the next 10 years is going to be now how can we, and I'm personally 40 years old now, so it's like a, you know stages in my life, how can we now share this on a public level, including my wife, my soulmate, my children are now, thank God, oh, I just made a wedding, they're going out and growing up to the next level themselves and going out into the world. So it's a, it's a transition point for me personally, and but it's also a transition point globally. How do we go into 2021 on a unified level that we can actually create a, not just a way of communicating and not just a, the way they talk about it in the media, um, the word I would like to use is just escaping me for a moment, but there's a certain you know, way that media portrays everything. If anyone wants to jump in with that word, I'd be happy to hear. But it, it's a certain storyline, and I believe that the storyline doesn't have to be divisive. It doesn't have to be political parties and left and right and religion, and it can be a very universal way of living, very with values and positivity and ability to communicate. And that's my message to to now today and I once again even though there's only uh, four or five six people tuning in but the beautiful thing is with United Souls is that we're always talking when we're talking on a soul level we're talking to everybody it's a universal soul experience so we're never actually by ourselves so I remember when I was in you know studying one rabbi would come through even if he wasn't feeling well and teach us even if there was one or two people we'd still give the class and that's really important to know because he knew the value and I was one of those one or two people and I take those lessons with me for the rest of my life and I'm able to thank God teach it to sometimes hundreds even maybe even thousands you know online with the online streaming and everything so we have the opportunity to share a lot of light and thank you for joining us and now I'd like to open up the to questions to conversations amongst ourselves so please go ahead anyone want to be thirst uh Lauren, or, oh, there you are with your coffee. Where are you joining us from, Nayana? Um, so I am right now in India. 
Yes, wow. I am. Uh, virtually, I'm working in Japan. Amazing. Um, Tokyo, but, is that right? Right. Yeah, Tokyo. And, uh, well, uh, you said it right. It's just uh, sometimes all it needs, you just, just need one person to make sure that it happens. And I think most of the time it's, you know, we ourselves, that one person. And um, the other thing I really liked uh, what you said is that it, it, the time has really come that we stop talking about, you know, uh, how much, uh, in, talking in terms of profit, we need to turn, talk in terms of equity. See, we come from a very, very uh, a, a, a glorious era, I think, you know, you, you seem to be somebody who must have heard a lot of story from your grandparents and them telling their stories that how in old time there were little communities and everybody had their place. And now if you look at things around, it's it's so, it's so sad that, you know, um, it's just like everything is uh, broken and pieces are scattered. And those pieces don't know to what part they belong in the bigger picture. And um, uh, what you said was right. We need to now get those pieces in their places. We need to make them realize that they're a bigger picture. They're not just a piece scattered somewhere, uh, trying to do a nine to five job and paying the bills. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I totally agree with that, obviously. And what I would like to suggest is practical steps how to do that. For example, you know, making more of these kind of Zoom communities, like what Jeff is doing, encouraging, and Lauren, encouraging this platform of online communication so there is more unified experiences online and that there is a, a theme and there shouldn't be, you know, some sort of guidance of what's discussed so it shouldn't get into negative or abusive places. And to encourage the online platform that is more liberal in terms of it doesn't it doesn't um force people like what's happening with big tech now trying to control the narrative that's the word i was trying to think of the narrative it doesn't try to control the narrative it allows the narrative to be authentic and real and the way that people should really communicate like i'm a big fan of these days of joe rogan podcast and he's a very you know successful podcaster and there's other people like tim ferris and you know there's a long list of podcasting that i've been listening to over the years and they've built, in my mind, a lot of concepts of one of being more effective in your lifestyle, and but also being more communicative. They're amazing communicators, you know, like a, a guy called Lewis Howes, very positive, very encouraging. There's a long list of these kind of people out there, and they should be, in my opinion, encouraged to keep going ahead, and other people should emulate them in building their platforms and not being... Um, you know, held back by lack of confidence or lack of resources. People should encourage each other like we're doing over here to communicate more. You know, personally, I have uh, online, I work for, with Brez of Israel and we, on our sites, we have a Muna concept. So Muna is a very universal principle. It's in Ju Judaism, it means belief. But I would explain it more as intrinsic belief. There's certainly... Uh, level of experience of belief not just uh, intellectual it should be something that people are actually tuning into on an internal level that they're really feeling it and experiencing it like an experience a person goes to a concert like i've been to in my past and you see the unity of the people together and i remember even as young as i was but being at the you know at the live aid event with freddie mercury and singing you know you know, Radio Gaga and everyone's clapping together or any other kind of event I went throughout my years in the music world and you feel that togetherness in a way that you can't experience, unfortunately, online. Maybe it can be manifest through technology one day, through streaming or some sort of high-level uh, unity concept online and I've definitely visualized such an experience and I do believe we'll get there um, because, you know, right now that's unfortunately where we have to be mostly with events. But... The, that concept, that experience of unity that I tasted growing up and then I was actually, my family were promoting it and creating that experience and they were the people behind these large events 
and I myself have been behind artists and got the enjoyment of seeing people experiencing togetherness and unity. Um, so what I would like to suggest, and that's in my first part of the course, is being proactive, is actually doing something about it. And one of the first things my, my wife pointed out is taking ownership of yourself. A person has to really be honest with themselves and see how can I put that into my daily practice. So even if the world is not actively tuning in to what I'm saying, but on some level, how can I, at least in my sphere of influence, as Stephen Covey says, and the people around me, the people that are communicating to me like for example the closest ones your spouse your you know your children please god your parents your family how can you at least in those spaces create that kind of unity and then from there it builds outwards into the larger circles and that is not so simple like you said it seems like everything's gone very broken and i agree with that unfortunately um but we have to keep optimistic and be proactive rather than reactive and do positive steps on a daily level how we can take ownership for this and not like i wrote here reactive means blaming a victimhood but being proactive is using each experience as an opportunity to learn and grow that's that's the ability that I mean, even if someone's upset with you online or even in this kind of space you know well you know why aren't there a hundred people signed up here you know blah 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 or each situation you get into in life what, why why this, why not that? And they're blaming you, God forbid. But that kind of experience, you can, you can take it personally, which is a mistake. Or you can think, how can I learn from this? How can I turn this around? How can I listen to that person where their pain point is? And if I'm not able to, to make a boundary, maybe they're not the right person for me to discuss this with, you know, to keep everything in a very positive framework. And that will give us ability to communicate in a more effective ways. And I do feel that a lot of the brokenness can be turned around. We can actually learn, um, like the concept in mystical texts is turning darkness into light. So the pain, the divisiveness can actually be turned into healing and to togetherness. That's something that we're capable of, all of us. And it's just a matter of one, of believing in ourselves and our ability. That's the soul aspect. That's why I believe it's a lot to do with tuning into that soul level. Because that soul part of ourselves, that soul, the soul level of humanity is so good. It's so intrinsically good. And one of the failings of a lot of people out in the world is that they've made us think that we don't have a soul, God forbid, or that there's hatred covering up the soul and we can't see another person's soul because of all the layers of things that they're busy with or, or the, the different opinions. And it can be it can be really really hard for a person to experience that soul level. So that's something which I know myself would I would love to experience life with more soul. And I'd love that other people around me can can do that as well. And I if I if I can bring it into my reality, then there's no reason that it doesn't start becoming a reality in a larger level. And I've seen it with my own eyes so many times. And that's why I said it has to come with an intrinsic belief that you, you know it. You know this kind of feeling of soulness and experience of unity and communication. You believe in it so that then the more you believe in it, the more you manifest it, the more you start to communicate to others, you feel their aura, you feel their light, you feel their love, you feel their kindness. You know, I was talking to, uh, to Lauren before we started the meeting and, you know, there's all different religious faiths and religious um, holidays. Right now, we've just gone through a few ourselves, you know, with the Jewish religious Hanukkah, and then there's the Festival of Light for other religions, and there's so many different ways of manifesting, and it's funny how they often link up in some way at certain times of year. And, you know, we just had, you know, Christmas, and there's the New Year. So rather than see all the differences in the religions, because, you know, there obviously are differences, but what are the universal principles that unite us all? What is the truth point, the love, the kindness? And this is what Lauren was saying before, and I see that in her family and what they've done in the online experience, that they've brought in that love and kindness so that we can all connect in that way. And I really feel that in a real level, that you know, just by going through basic values and points and then communicating, we can get there. So I'd like to hear more from, you know, if you'd like to say, have an, if you have another question, uh, Naya, no, anyone else here? I'd like to hear more 
what your opinion is, your feeling, because it does help me to communicate that other people communicate back. And that's what I love about this idea that it shouldn't just be me speaking and preaching, but like, you know, I don't want to be a preacher. I want to be a communicator. I want to like feel like we're sitting in a room together having a coffee, you know, like that's that's the kind of experience it should be. Oh, enjoying. I've got my water here. I'm just already it's for me it's near the end of the day, so you know. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So Lauren, you have anything? Yeah, I mean it's amazing just to sit here with the four of us and um and feel the connection, like you said, you know, one of the hardest things, like when you're talking about the connections when you would go to your when you would go to the concerts and that feeling that everyone's connected. Like that's what I would always feel when I went to go to summer camp with my kids. And we would get together. And for us, it was about the, the songs. It was, it was prayer time, but it wasn't so much that it was a prayer, but it was this song that from the bottom of our soul connected all of us, even though we had just learned it, like it didn't matter. And that is an awesome feeling. And that feeling of community and that feeling of connection, I feel we are getting through some of the steps that we do together online because we're keeping a sacred space and we're saying that there's certain things that are allowed and certain things that we're going to say please don't do in this space um and i think that for me the hardest part and i see that you 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 get that there's a struggle there that w when someone is combative against it and someone wants to whether they want to break it or they're trying to push your buttons to see how far you're going to go that's when it falls apart for me and I get very flustered because I don't, I, it's like I'm protecting my, the, the innards of us and I'm protecting the soul and someone wants to bash it and say, no, 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 your soul is no good. And I think that's the strength that I always look for towards others is to find out, you know, well, what, how do you do that? How do you keep from getting broken, even though you know that you're on the right path? And like you said, Naya, the whole imagery of the of the broken um, vessel is such a mystical. I mean, we, I learned it as a mystical Jewish um, teaching, and I know it's not just Jewish teaching. I know it's universal, and it it fascinates me every time we all have that same feeling, like there's pieces of light everywhere that we're trying to fill ourselves up with, so that we can just shine from the inside out, and that each of us can be part of this world in such a bright, positive way that this negativity that we feel coming at us you know it's like being thrown at us and we're standing here with like a shield to ourselves to say you can't come in I don't want you go away you know um but it's hard and that's really hard work and I feel that you know yes we're blessed because we have each other and I have a family that keeps it going but when someone starts bandering on it what do you do how do you like deflect it so that it's their stuff and not mine Yes, yeah, so that's something which takes a, a lot of inner work, and that's why I do believe the United Souls is a lot is going to be a lot of um, internal stuff that you're going to have to talk out um, with someone close, and you know some people have professional help, some people have uh, guide guidance. Like you know, personally, I listen to a lot of special people online. One of the names that comes to mind, which we share on my network as well a lot, Gadalia Fenster. He's a guy in Miami friend of mine and he's putting out a lot of strong teachings but the main point is of not allowing he's very strong on this and not allowing anyone to push him off his and not just himself but everyone who's tuning in that they should really believe in their mission once you have feel like you have a mission like you're in this world for a purpose it's not just whatever and you're tuning into your mission then it, unless someone really is saying something which is you know are going to help you achieve and there's a guy called Tom Billu if you go to his his podcast called Impact Theory or David Goggins or any of these guys out there very strong in their thing so there, there's a certain strength you can get from those kind of people that can help you not feel weak or, or vulnerable because you you realize suddenly that you you're in, you're so confident in your mission you're so empowered you're so inspired you're so on fire that often what people are saying it's not even a true perception so there are constructive people around who you can trust and you put them into your sphere of influence like a lot of people say it's very important to have those close people you know who truly want your good and truly love you and respect you and and are able to give that kind of 
guidance that's coming from a good, healthy place. But the general story, you have to very much filter, uh, in my opinion, and, and you have to often remind yourself that they're not really talking about you. They're talking about their perception of you, which is based, unfortunately, on a lot of misconceptions. And they need help more than you need help in that respect. Can you be helpful of service to them if they're able to allow that? It's up to them. And if they don't want, then unfortunately, you can't do so much of that. Like someone once asked me, like when I wanted to create this big unity concert in the world and I wanted to do it, you know, last summer, I wanted it to be in Jerusalem and from Jerusalem, you know, stream out to the rest of the world. But then there'll be people saying, oh, is it pro-Jewish? Is it pro-Arab? Is it pro this? Without getting political, but you know, what, who are you representing? So I'd say I'm representing unity. So, but, but there's some people who say, but, yeah, but you're, st you're still a Jew living in Israel. So then <laughs> I'm going to be against that. And there are people, like I work with an artist, Nissan Black, and there are people even against him. And he's coming from Seattle, from, from the black community there, from the, from the ghetto. And he built himself up to be an inspirational person. And you think, and I thought always initially for the many years I managed him and worked with him, that everyone would unify with him because he's amazing. You know, it's just his message is so universal and his music and and he's from such a diverse background and he talks in such diverse ways. And yet there are people who, unfortunately, I'm starting to see, not many, very few voices, the majority is all positive, but those there are still some haters and, you know, it's hard to, I don't like even saying the word, but there are. And what that does is it allows the people that want to unify have to strengthen themselves and the people that want to hate will will expose themselves for what they are and joe rogan says a great concept that the best thing to do is not read the comments yeah once you start getting more and more public just don't read the comments unless you know thank god a lot of the people in my network are very positive in their commenting um, but there are some more controversial speakers and people that i'm you know connected with and the comments are terrible and it's hard for me. Sometimes I'm, you know, just going through the, the comments that are going on other people's videos. Thank God they're not on mine, but they're very negative and it's very hard. And a lot of the time, you know, just personally, I'd like to just delete them all. But, you know, sometimes you have to leave them there for the sake of, you know, allowing other opinions. You know, that's the whole thing with editing and and keeping what, what would you say would the word be for making sure the narrative in your community? But what would you say the word would be? what you're doing you're curating or curating, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what you're, doing. you're curating a community that the message should be consistent with your general value and hopefully if you're keeping that universal and unifying enough it should be inclusive and when you have to be exclusive it's on the rare rare occasion but it's not a personal thing this is something that we have the beautiful opportunity to make as someone just messaged me now, unifications. So it's, it's a very deep idea in mysticism. You brought up mystical ideas, and I'm a big fan of mysticism. Getting into once again, like the way I depicted it through concerts, events, through the Zoom communities, through family occasions, through constantly finding. And like I said, I have in my course, but I do believe the first things first before you can go public, you do that the private stuff. That's why I don't feel like I'm totally there yet to go totally public because I'm still on a private level, still struggling. But then there's that balance where you have to you have to be able to go public on some level, be honest with yourself that you still got a lot of private work to do. And there's that back and forth. And if you're in that realm of constantly working on yourself in a real authentic way, then you shouldn't really have too much time for the, those negative voices. It shouldn't knock you off path. You're strong in what you're doing and you're seeing the overall the results are positive. So why let, you know, a few dissenters or negative people push push you down? You know, it's it's silly in a way. And you have to understand that like I, like I said before, you they're just gonna expose themselves. It's gonna be obvious to the community, to the people around who are who are looking for the real connection what is disconnecting and they themselves will disconnect from what you're doing without you having to be too strong in the curating and the and the discipline it, it sort of works itself out over time you know i've seen that with so many relationships you know i feel honored that jeff has brought me into his life and now your life lauren and all the other people around 
and it's been a continuous connection and you know there's so many other people around you know like my old friends you know one of my friends is in dubai right now and you know, i was seriously since he's so nearby i was like i'm going on a plane i gotta go see my friend because you know this last year we haven't been able to connect and he's been in london it's on shutdown on and off and it's more strict there whereas going to dubai it's only you know an hour or so away and it's you know it, with the time difference and everything and it's so close and you know i could just make that connection with my friend and I was so excited and, you know, hopefully I will get there. And I was almost booking to be there today or tomorrow. I was like that, you know, no matter what the cost, even if I had to go into quarantine after this, my friend, you know, I haven't seen him for, you know, since, um, well, I don't even know, like it's been a while since, I, I can't even remember. That's the thing, it's getting all a bit blurred, the, those moments with people because it's been so long. You know, that's one of the things I love with Jeff, like he's got all the dates, everything worked out. You know, like I, I don't remember exactly that clearly. So, you know, which event and which day and which month and which moment I was with that person. It's a beautiful trait that he has. Uh, but it, it reminds me, like, thank God, like of all those amazing breakfasts and networking events. And th these are opportunities to unite with souls. So my message to everybody is since we're not able to do this physically so much now, that we can do it as souls. We're connected as souls. And it doesn't just mean through the Zoom meeting. Like I said, there are souls listening to this conversation beyond. Like people underestimate the power of positive words and thinking in a more unified way what kind of effect it has on the universe. It creates, like, you know, you have these geniuses like Einstein and they created these tremendous theories that created these tremendous effects on the universe. Well, just by us, talking out positive and thinking through things in positive ways. We're creating that kind of butterfly effect, that kind of massive impact on the, on the whole universe just by being authentic with our, with our circle and discussing these kind of things. So I believe 100% that this, this class, this session went out to thousands and thousands of souls. I believe that totally. And it affected the world in a positive way, just like when I do any of the spiritual commandments that i have as a jew or as a human being i'm i'm more godly in how i act i'm more positive more giving more kind that creates a tremendous compound effect it's spiritually not just on myself and my own personal spiritual growth but it affects my wife my children my parents my ancestors and all the descendants going to come from me personally like when i was standing under the wedding chuppah the the uh the canopy of my daughter that experience, I've never experienced such a unity experience in my life. Even though my parents weren't there, they were on Zoom, and my uncles and my aunties and my cousins, they were on Zoom, and people were watching in. And, you know, I tried to tune into the Pobo community at the wedding, and my wife would have given me a slap for doing that. But I tried to tune in, and, you know, like, it didn't work for some reason because we were quite far out of Jerusalem, but there were so many people missing physically and online and blah, blah, blah. Like my closest friends were there, thank God, all having a lachaim. You know, they all sent me pictures of them drinking to the Zoom and the YouTube, um, uh, you know, um, live feed. But it, it was so many people missing. But on an internal level, that moment under the wedding canopy, I felt like everyone was there. All my ancestors, all my, dis my, my wife, and all my descendants from my, my newly married daughter, every, all the souls came to that experience. And that's important to realize that there's a whole spiritual dimension that we often don't put into when we calculate our life. Like our, our, our guest just spoke about before, that we can't always think about business in terms of profits. So I always make a joke that profit and profit, you know, having a profit is also a similar word. There's a certain level of prophecy, a certain level of spirituality that we don't allow ourselves to experience, but it's actually going on every moment. And that we can all achieve a certain, not maybe a level of prophecy so easily, but at least some level of spiritual awareness and, and allow ourselves to let go a little bit and to tune into that mindfulness and to that inter intentional living that unites us more than, than, God forbid, divides us. And that's the kind of wavelength that people will allow themselves just once in a while, even like a moment of meditation or prayer every day, just to tune into that side of themselves that they are one with this group of people and they're not they're not divided they're really a soul and they're unified with that group of people and they're actually unified on a level that's even beyond that like uh, i personally say every day b'shem ko and it's a yichud shalem it's a certain 
it's the name of all the all the souls of Yisrael and, and a yichud. It's a unification in all the humanity and all the worlds and all the worlds. And that's something which a person, if they would practice a little bit more, think about it. You know, and it sounds a bit, you know, overly spiritual or maybe a bit hard for every person because I sometimes speak to very, you know, normal down to earth business people and you can't talk these ways because it sounds a little bit too hippie or whatever. But on an internal level, even if I can't talk it, I'm feeling it. I'm thinking it. And I know I start to see that sparkle in their eyes that they're feeling it. And there's a certain connection point. And that that um, flow that I'm very into personally, connect, creating that flow can really make a big difference. I have podcasts, a Unity Flow podcast, Relationship Flow podcast. My, my goal is, and my Muna is our future podcast. These podcasts I have is to allow there to be a flow of positivity coming out on a daily, weekly level that people who tune in, whoever do, feel that feeling that life flows. For example, I was interviewed on a podcast just recently and I spoke about how I'm you know, a booking agent for Nissan Black, a musician, a, a rapper. And that moment, a person was looking to book Nissan Black who was listening to the podcast and he couldn't get... You know, he just didn't find who to contact. He didn't Google it well enough or whatever. And he hears the podcast and he hears, oh, this guy. And he looks on the notes and there's my email. Within a few minutes, I'm emailed by him to book for the next podcast for him and his interview on YouTube and everything else and his community. And I think it's a place called Torch and somewhere in Texas. And they, they had a whole event built from that one listening of me mentioning I helped this artist. And, you know, people network that way all the time. And it's, it's just very nice that you have these avenues of connecting with people in a, in a global sense. In the past, you know, I told, I told people that I wouldn't even be available. I was traveling all the time, doing in-person events. I couldn't go on a podcast. I couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't be on this community so much. I just didn't have time for it. And this has created space in people's lives to find new ways of connecting that really can actually enhance relationships because it's now it's done in a way in our own comfort in our own home look at the beautiful dog from lauren there like you know we can actually just sit there and and connect and it's beautiful and you know i'd like to hear from more people because i'm speaking a long time does anyone else want to say anything tune in i'm happy to hear from anybody here any questions i mean we brought it about being reactive and proactive um i'll talk about the next point in the course then Making a mission statement on values, goals, and dreams. So I do feel that that's something really profound and powerful. That if, once again, we already said before about the power of having a mission, but if a person and each organization, even Pulver, EDU, and, you know, Brez of Israel, every organization around has some sort of mission statement. You know, personally, mine is United Souls, so we should be able to join together. That experience of mission statement is very empowering and it gives you clarity because you have values, goals, dreams. These are things that you know you can really get much more strength in what you're trying to do in life. And I think the mission statement is something everyone should have written down. And I, I really got a lot of inspiration from Stephen Covey about that concept in his book, The Seven Habits Highly Effective People. So we give him credit. But also the next one is how to live more effectively and focused when we face so many distractions and uncertainties. I think that would be like the main point because these are the first three points of more to do with private victory. And I think that we have to start off the first getting ourselves into the right framework. So how do we be more effective? So oft, often that's to do with time management, using our time effectively. You know, everyone's time is very precious, not to waste people's times. And to, to make sure, like, for example, in a communication space like we have in Zoom, to be sensitive of how long we talk. You know, like, I like the fact that in our groups we only have, like, a minute or so. I actually prefer that, you know, quickening of time. I'm personally someone who could talk a lot. I can write a lot. Like, I'm writing a book right now. It's been very helpful for me to express all these ideas in my mind. But in order to connect with other people, it's really important to be able to talk on a very um, specific level and to really be able to connect in an effective time managed way and not just that to have your priorities in life what is your priorities What's the, why has this become such a priority for me personally in my spare time to be on these community chats because connection with people is a priority in my life um 
Does it get in the way of family first? Well, hopefully not, because my family have to always come first. And I think that's something which would resolve some of the brokenness we've mentioned at the beginning of this, that if we have that in mind, the family first concept is a value that unfortunately has been challenged very much nowadays. Um, and I, once again, I'm not trying to get political, but just, just to understand that, that everyone needs connection, no matter who you are. And everyone needs some sort of family structure, even if you don't have any live family, but there is the concept of that, of a friend or a, or a guide, or there's all kinds of people that you can connect with and unify with, and it has that, that model of a family. It doesn't have to be, you know, strictly speaking, the, the very strict mode of family, obviously. That, that's not the point. The point is the connection aspect. But when you do have a family, to, to prioritize those people, and that's something which I know myself, like, is a struggle with the business and the way the world is. And one now, thank God, not traveling, that's been made easier. But then also with the Zoom, not to overly Zoom, not to over-Zoom, yeah? To be Zoomed out, as people make a joke, like, to, to keep that in a boundary as well. And that's a big thing, keeping the distractions. I think if we're not so distracted, then we can tune in, like, there's... There's times to chill out, like I'm right next to where my bed, bed bedroom is and where I, I said in the other day with one of Jeff's meeting, it's a safe space for me and it's my happy place, not just because I sleep, but because I do my writing there and I communicate to my wife and we do our chilling there, we have our, our glass of wine and our time to just relax and that's also being effective because you have to have the run and rest balance. You can't be running all the time, you can't be resting too much and during this Corona challenge, everyone had to readjust and reevaluate what their running time is and resting time when they're busy hustling, when they're busy, you know, giving to themselves and their family, keeping life very focused and balanced. And I think that's something which can help create much more unity. If everyone had that more under control, if the over hustle was toned down a little bit out there online, that people are hustling way too much. You know, even before this class, I suddenly felt this pressure, you know, to get people to come. So I'm going to over hustle and it can probably be irritating to people, you know, like at the same time, my intention is good because I want people to join this experience. So getting that balance and being like intentional about it, you know, these, these are constant thoughts that we have to work through and structure in our schedule and, you know, also know what, what is going to be effective. You know, for example, for me, you know, doing these kind of classes is definitely a big priority in my schedule. You know, doing any kind of class, opportunity to connect with people. You know, I give a class weekly on a Monday, 2.45 p.m. Israel time. And I, thank God, have seen online thousands of people listen to it. And it's been very encouraging for me weekly to prepare for it. I already have my class for tomorrow prepared. And tonight I'm doing a class in a few hours with a famous rabbi in the studio, which is where I also record my class. And in that studio, we really get some great guests come. We've had 20 classes and some really inspirational people. And that's, for me, a very important part of my schedule to collaborate with other people online. We've had, we're have we having tonight someone zoom in from South Africa uh, about money, you know, how to make money more soulful, which would connect to the original point we had at the beginning. The, the making business should be more soulful experience. It shouldn't just be. So it's, the course is called Soulful Money. Um, we had soulful music, soulful truths, all, everything to bring an aspect of soul into what you're doing. You know, so it, this is something which people can get gain a lot from. And I think it would energize people's lives. would realize that maybe they don't have to be so, you know, so um, feeling such victimhood or other kinds of crutches that are affecting people right now, or, or even the, the poverty aspect that people go on and on. If we would restructure our way of thinking and realize how blessed we all are, how much abundance there is in our generation, and how much blessings we have that the previous generations, our ancestors couldn't imagine. Like our, our, one of our guests said, I probably have amazing stories. I may mean, think one of the stories is the poverty that they had, you know, in the 20s and the 30s in London, or before that in Europe, or wherever it was where, where my ancestors were. And the abundance, you know, even going to my grandparents' house, the simplicity, the, the little amount of things they had in their house and the, the joy they had from just simple living, that we can remind ourselves that we have so much and yet we're not so joyful. So to restructure our mindset, to enjoy the, the what we have 
and that can create a much less jealousy, much less you know need to overly hustle. Suddenly, there's a much more, as we call it in Hebrew, a a satisfaction in our life, a certain fulfillment, and that can can give us the ability to be much more effective. Like, you know, maybe sometimes I'm a bit extreme on the other side where I'm a little bit too overly fulfilled. Like, you know, I don't really, you know, go shopping so much. Unlike my wife, who loves shopping. And my wife and I, we try to balance that out together. Like she bought me this as a new top. We just bought it the other day. You know, it looks a bit nice. in the end, the faded one or whatever, or with the stain or whatever it was, you know, you have to be respectful in how we look and dress and, you know, these these are things that balance. And nowadays, that's like an understatement. People want, to ta- you know, name brands and people have all these like levels of fashion. You know, look at the, what's out there on, you know, you go onto Netflix and you see the standard, the quality of how people look. And it's not re- it's not even reality, as my wife always reminds me. She says, see that lady? She doesn't actually look like that in real life. Yeah. It's a lot of hours of preparation, maybe even surgery, maybe even this, maybe even that, all kinds of extra stuff. And all, not only that, all the effects nowadays. And as Joe Rogan once said, he was, his daughter made him into a woman, you know, for a nap. So, you know, like, it, it was like this stunning lady. And he was like, I don't look like that. I'm a savage. That's not me. But this is how scary technology's got and perceptions of people. So once again, we have to go back into that soul level, that internal level, of what really matters is not how we experience people externally, but how we experience people on an internal level. And then all the jealousy and all the insecurities and all the f- food problems that people have and all this struggle with so many things that so much cause so much pain on the on emotional level can be reduced because we're thinking in a more elevated, essential, internal way. And then people can actually enjoy life much more. They can actually enjoy their relationships in a much higher level. So my hope is that, you know, what we discussed today, this is just, like I said, really part one. And hopefully more people would join in and contribute in the future. We'll have like tens of people giving opinions and it can get more back and forth. But the goal is that, you know, once again, that we are communicating on a soul level. And I believe in that soul level. It's not something which is you know, just, you know, a nice, you know, concept that you can forget about. It's a daily experience. You're, the people around you are walking souls. And ultimately, you're going to be a soul for eternity. You know, everyone has to, on some level, believe that. You know, you don't just disappear into nothingness. What kind of, you know, it takes a lot of belief to believe in nothingness. To believe that there's something after this all makes sense of this whole journey in this world you know to understand that there's some sort of matrix experience and there's something beyond the matrix that we have that ability and that is happening right now and it's happening in the future and it was happening before as well it's not just some you know uh, spiritual concept for you know down the road after 120 or whatever we are experiencing the soul now in the moment now and it's it creates a whole different way of doing business and and it hopefully should make you happy because the soul wants happiness. It doesn't want sadness. And if you're feeling you talk it out, but to be strong in your belief in yourself that you are purpose, you have a mission, you have values, people need you in this world, your your existence is important, and everything you're doing has has that soulful experience of meaning and and creates that kind of unification that makes the world a a good place to be and that you can on your small levels make massive impact and you can transform this world that seems so divisive into a world of unity just by you being more unified in yourself and unifying with others and it creates ripple effects and like i said the haters the people that want to undo that will expose themselves we don't have to go and fight and expose them they'll expose themselves so we can relax in that respect of wanting to be on like guard all the time or fighting by just us creating that unified experience it will already filter out a lot of the negative voices and i've seen that in my online experience i thank god i've never been political online and therefore i never attracted fine i'm not a powerful famous guy because i haven't gone the controversial way but um who would want that when you see how much hatred and negativity it creates as well? So it's better to just be authentic and truthful. And if there are more of us, 
doing this, I believe that we'll have a united souls experience in this world. Amen. That's, that's pretty much it for today. If anyone wants to say anything else, I'm happy to hear, like a goodbye or hello. Um, and that's it, you know, I do believe that there's... Elliot has a chance because yeah. he has been pretty quiet. Yeah. Uh, Elliot's driving, so... Oh, oh there, he, there he is. Elliot, do you have anything you'd like to add, sweetie? First of all, it was a very nice, um, very nice spiritual talk. Oh. And uh, I just want to make a mention, um, you know, you put out that energy and soul, and then there are always that negative what you spoke about, but, you know, you got to populate your world with loving people. Mm. And when you put out that message, it vibrates and it jumps, you know. Years ago, with my friend Michael, we created this website called The Magic of Israel, called United with Israel. Yeah. And we just wanted to show the beauty of it. And we didn't want to have politics or anything like that. And all of a sudden, it jumped. And what's beautiful about it, it jumped to the non-Jewish world, the beauty of Israel, the magic of it. You know, and thank God today we have over six and a half million people. Wow. But the reality is that we talk about positive things magical things mm. you know you wake up in the morning in the jewish world and you know you go to sleep at night and you don't know where you are but you wake up and there you are you thank god for bringing back your soul so they say in mysticism where was your soul your soul was visiting your great great grandfather and generations that haven't been created yet and then you come back and it's like charging your iphone and you're back on the world and there you have it your heart's working it's pumping, you're alive and well. And just reach for beautiful things. Yeah, I mean. Positive things. Yeah, and I think that we can do that. Like, you've manifested it online successfully. It's not something which can't be done. So all credit to you and your team, and it should grow and grow. Yeah, but, but look, 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 what, look what Jeff has created. Yeah, sure. All he talks about is, is love and spirituality and all the people that are connected. And then you have your... your, your, your I call it confession. You go to your rooms. <laughs> confession <laughs> rooms, the Zoom rooms, the confession <laughs> rooms. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, you know. And, and everyone in the room says it's okay. So, you know, it's all good. I like that. You know someone someone else messaged person, me. They wanted the to know. We, the one person we don't give credit for is Lauren. Oh, yeah, Lauren sure. A tremendous amount of spirituality for children, caring and love of people. And making this whole thing work for Jeff. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Elliot. And someone just messaged me, how can we pray in the US for all the people in Israel who are now experiencing a crazy lockdown? Which literally, as we started well, this... Is, it's not just Israel. I know, I know. The lockdown, the lockdown went into action literally as we started this, this session. And really? the, the, streets, yeah. the streets were crazy, like jam-packed because everyone's trying to get home and... You know? Ellie, the Jewish people were in the desert for 40 years. Yeah. So you think we're going to worry about this? Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's it. only a two-week lockdown. Not so bad. You know, like, Don't I, worry about it. I, I have to say it's a little lenient, more lenient, because we have a 1,000 meters. They're allowed to go, so I can still go to the studio, which, thank God, is less than 1,000 meters away, and I can still do my studio class, and my where I pray is less than 1,000 meters away. So personally... Uh, yeah, I'm personally in a situation where I can still access all my main go, go, points. Go. Thanks. Ellie. So you're right. It's definitely not something to worry about. Um, but um, yeah, let's hope the main thing is that, that whatever they're trying to accomplish with the lockdown in terms of keeping people healthy and safe, that part should be accomplished. And the positive aspects of being more together with family and less running around, that can also be accomplished. The family first aspect that we're all forced into into close quarters of our family, which sometimes can actually create more problems. But in a way, you know, once again, it exposes what the relationship level is and what you're doing. And you can work on that aspect of your relationship. And the other point is that, you know, just to pray that this shouldn't happen again. I mean, it's really long term. This is not healthy for people. People need to be out. People need to, you know, I want to hug Jeff on Tel Aviv Beach again soon. And I want to meet Lauren in person because I don't remember actually ever meeting you or any of the other people. Our friend from India, we should meet in person. Please, God, I'd, I'd love. I was planning a tour to India, actually, not so long ago. Yeah. We were talking about it. And I've been to Mexico and 
yeah, it'd be amazing to come there and just, you know, meet the, the people there because we do have a following online and God from India and, yeah. you know, they definitely reached out to us about coming to visit. And, you know, these kind of things that this should be the kind of world, it should be global and it should be unified and connected. And we should pray that we should go out from these situations to really join together and not, you know, now now we have an opportunity to get back to the fighting, you know, let's get back to the unifying, you know, let's get back to so, um, global what peace. I was thinking, while, you were to, while you were talking about it, what I was thinking is that we have so many health insurance plans. Now we need to work on the karma insurance plan. Yeah. yeah. Because karma isn't just limited to us, what you were talking about, yeah. ancestors and our descendants. It's, it's not the body, it's the soul that we are talking about. Yeah, and we should so, we should allow that voice yeah. to get stronger. You know why not? Why can't people? What are people afraid of talking about the soul? It's not it's not going to punish people. We're not not a negative soul. It's a it's a loving, giving, kind experience of mankind, of humankind. It's it's not some yeah. limited, horrible thing that people have distorted the soul to be some I don't know what. You know, um, for me, like the soul is is where my music comes from, my creativity, my joy. My relationship with my wife, we're soulmates, we join together. This is the kind of soul experience. My children are manifestations of the soul. You know, to, to, to talk about a, a famous guide once told me, if you want to help kids who are at risk, teenagers at risk, you have to learn to talk to the souls in them. Because to talk to them, you know, what you're going to do, go on TikTok and try and like do the dance with them. Like it's, you know, how, how hard are you going to work to be relatable to the new generation? So that what I would say is that the, the the soul level is relatable always. And I've seen that with my children. At, you know, I do have one or two children who, who are struggling in that way. And I've worked in that world for many, many years. And whenever I myself allow myself to be more soulful in how I communicate, my wife is a genius at this. You know, I, I'm still learning. You know, that's one of the ways sometimes you have to teach it to learn it, to learn it, to teach it. It's, a, it's an upward spiral. You just keep growing because you're working on it all the time even if you have moments of fall but you're even if the spiral looks like it's going down but ultimately it's always going up so you're always going upwards in your growth and that's the kind of positive mindset you have to deal with growth and self-work uh, to keep a very upward uh, momentum even if you have moments of seemingly falls and when you're not living up to these ideals that we've discussed today on a personal level so if you keep that larger picture together, I think that we're all going to get there. Um, someone asked me, someone messaged me. Um, I have sons. They want to know what would be the, a good spiritual tool to help them. One spiritual tool. So I think the, what, the most best thing that we've ever done in our home is, is to teach our kids to be kind and caring towards other people. So I think that would be the, the most important tool to give to the next generation is to teach them how to be kind and caring and compassionate and giving. And like you said, that would bring the karma, that would bring that positive circle of life in a, in a happy way, in a good way, more and more to your children and to their lives and to their sphere of influence. And that's already giving them a legacy. And I think that's something that everyone in the world can do is be more kind and caring. And we have, thank God, good teachers out there. Tony Robbins, he's feeding millions, you know, or so he says. So, Let's so do it. Said, yeah, let's do I mean, it. The thing is that, that what you touched on is so true, you know. <sighs> in education, there was a time when values were just never needed to be taught at school, right? Your soul was nourished at home. But home, home is different for so many people. That in the past 20 years, one of the things that we do, especially as early childhood educators, is always look at the bottom line. Like, what is, the, what is it that we want them to learn? They're three years old. They're coming into my room for three, four hours a day. It's not about teaching them what an A looks like, but it's teaching them that we're a person and you're a person. And when you say that, it hurts my feelings. And this is how I feel. And this is how you feel. And, you know, when you, when you grow that kindness, then you're growing people that you're proud to be in their, in their company and you want them in your community. And, you know, it's, coming in all ends now in school and schools finally understanding that some of our kids are coming from a place where they never knew what soul was so yeah. open the door even in school or 